this Among Us? Imposter? Is this the imposter from Among Us? What is happening to me? September 17th, 1988, a Nicolas Cage meme classic was born. And it cost only $2 million. Of course, at the time, people didn't really like it. They said that his overacting ruined the tone of the movie. They said it was ridiculous. But then came the cult following. Yes, there are a lot of people out there that love this movie. Not because it's like an amazing, groundbreaking piece of cinema, but because it's such an amazing meme. Some movies were made just to be a meme, and this was the start of the Nicolas Cage meme. Today's video is sponsored by Shudder. I've been wanting to get sponsored by these guys for so long because I actually use the streaming service a lot. It's one of my favorite streaming services. The movie that we're talking about today, Vampire's Kiss, is available to watch on Shudder. My favorite Nicolas Cage movies, Color Out of Space and Mandy, are both available on Shudder right now. After hearing that, if you guys aren't clicking on the link in the description, I don't know what's wrong with you. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles, host, the Mortuary Collections, and the hit Creepshow TV series from executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. From Hollywood favorites and cult classics to original series and critically acclaimed new genre films you won't find anywhere else. I'm just gonna name off a bunch of movies that I love that are on this service. Revenge, Hellraiser, After Midnight, The Wailing, The Dark and the Wicked. You can kind of think of Shudder as like the Netflix for horror. You can stream great thrillers, horror, and suspense films for $5.99 a month or $56.99 a year. There's new supernatural terrors, edge of your seat thrillers, and shocking horrors added every week. You'll have unlimited access to stream ad-free on all of your favorite devices, whether it be iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, you name it. So try Shutter for free for 30 days. Just go to Shutter.com and use promo code Elvis the Alien. And that's Shutter, S-H-U-D-D-E-R. The link will be at the top of the description. Now back to the review. Nicolas Cage's career was just starting to blossom. He was only 24 years old at the time. And you can tell that he desperately wanted to make it big in Hollywood. He conquers every single scene he's in. As soon as the camera's on, he just goes ballistic. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. And you have to do it. You have to, or I'll fire you. Do you understand? Of course I'm talking about the movie Vampire's Kiss. It was considered a commercial flop upon release, but developed a cult following over the years. Kind of similar to Fight Club, except it's not an amazing movie. It's an okay movie with some really great memes. Nicolas Cage plays a character named Peter Lowe. He's a driven literary agent. He's narcissistic and greedy. He works all day and club hops all night. His life is nothing but one night stands, the pursuit of money and prestige. And he's slowly going insane because there's something that Peter Lowe is lacking and that's love. This is a love story, a very bizarre love story. <laughs> Peter Lowe is extremely lonely and he's cruel and impatient to his poor assistant, Alva. She needs the job to survive, so she puts up with Peter. That's right, Alva. It's a horrible, horrible job. He brings home a girl one night and they're both attacked by a bat. The girl hides in the hallway as Peter tries to fend it off. The next day, Peter tells his psychiatrist that the bat turned him on. And I'll be damned if I didn't get really turned on. With all due respect, what the fuck? Yeah, this is when things start to get weird. The next day, he brings home another girl named Rachel. She has fangs and she ends up biting him while they're having sex. Peter pulls away at first, but ends up enjoying it. The next morning, Peter cuts himself shaving and it's revealed to us that he hallucinated Rachel's existence and he has no bite mark on his neck. So there's this contract that Peter needs, but it was misplaced and his secretary Alva is having some issues finding it. And throughout the movie, Peter is extremely impatient with her. He belittles her and screams at her. We'll touch on that later, but... Don't rape me. <laughs> rape you? I will. Come on, Alva. Jesus Christ. He ends up jumping on her desk. Did you... Were you... You were the one that said jump up on the desk. I think you? I did. <laughs> And it's Which, kind of so unexpected, like... <laughs> I mean, he's like Spider-Man all of a sudden. It's... And then he chases her into the ladies' room. This scene is so crazy. I love it so much. There you are! Why are you running? Why are you running? What the fuck is going on? This missing contract weighs on Peter's mind, and he can't understand how a file could be misfiled. 
So he expresses himself to a psychiatrist. How could somebody misfile something? What could be easier? It's all alphabetical. This scene would live on to be one of Nick Cage's most meme scenes in history. A, B, C, D, E, E, E. I've never misfiled anything, not one time. I never misfiled anything, not once, not one time. A, B, C, D. Two, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. This movie might have been a flop, but it definitely cemented Nick Cage as like this really outrageous actor who was willing to do pretty much anything to get his name out there. And I think that appealed to a lot of people in Hollywood. I listened to the commentary for this movie. Nick Cage and director Robert Bierman discussed this scene. And apparently every single hand gesture was choreographed by Cage in his apartment to his cat. <laughs> well, it actually is extremely choreographed. I mean, every one of those moves was was thought out in my hotel room with my cat. <laughs> I like to imagine him screaming the alphabet at his cat. <laughs> yeah, a, B, C, D, E. And the hands on his hip gesture at the end, he says was inspired by the musician Mick Jagger. Here we go. Here comes Jagger. I never misspelled anything. Not that. Wait a minute. Not once. Not one time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Peter then starts wearing shades around the office because he's convinced himself that he's turning into a vampire and he can't stand the light. It's kind of bright in here, isn't it? The workday ends and he calls Alva into his office. She tells him that sifting through an endless stack of files all day is wearing on her and she'd like some help. And this is how Peter responds to her. You're the lowest on the totem pole here, Alva. The lowest. Do you realize that? I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to and you have to do it. This is another timeless Nicolas Cage meme. That fucking face he makes at her. <laughs> he makes his eyes super wide and he, and he looks at her like this. He puts his chin up really high. He's like, oh, Alva, you're a piece of shit, Alva. <laughs> I wouldn't choose anybody else for this job but you, Alva. It's incredible. So yeah, he's clearly losing it. There's a scene where he starts breaking a bunch of stuff. He breaks a mirror. He throws a table. See this? That's all real. Yeah. See that? La None yeah. of this is special effects. Right. All the furniture is real. All the glass in the furniture is real. How I let you do this, I do not know. You, you couldn't do it again. I no. mean, you know, that's weird. And do you know what happened? We had two cameras on this and the second camera broke. We only have one shot. This is the only shot. Look at this. That's plate glass. It's all real. I mean, actors f throwing around real plate glass. <laughs> <laughs> this is that type of authentic filmmaking that I wish I'd see more of. Nicolas Cage really took this character and ran with it, giving it a life of its own. A lot of people dislike his role in this movie because he's overacting and he's being super ridiculous and he's goofy and the way he talks is unnatural. The work's not just gonna go away, Alva. It never just goes away. But I honestly think that Nicolas Cage was just doing his best to become this character. Wouldn't you say that's right, Nick? I don't know what you're talking about, I'm Peter Lowe, and I'm a vampire, not an actor. So why don't you go back to your silly little video, okay? Peter continues to see the vampire woman Rachel at night. He removes the band-aid from his shave cut and reveals two puncture wounds from when he was bit before. The next day, he acts like he's wounded by a mirror. You know, because vampires, they can't see themselves in mirrors. Yeah, they don't like mirrors. And then he eats a cockroach. <laughs> like a real cockroach. He just picks it up and throws it in his mouth. Dear God, it's gross. And apparently this was Nick's idea. I was originally gonna eat raw eggs or something. And I yeah. thought, no, we should make it a cockroach because I really wanna do something that would shock the audience. And I saw it as like a business decision because I've seen this movie in the theater and when people see that cockroach go in my mouth, it's like the bus blowing up in speed. And according to an interview I saw, he had to do it twice. So he made me do it twice, but I can tell you it was the most disgusting <laughs> horrible memory I, I have of any experience on a movie set. And they even got a call from an animal rights group about this part. This is what Nick had to say about that. S excuse me, do you have a can of like a raid in your house? <laughs> do you have a can, you know? The next day, Alva calls out of work for obvious reasons because her boss is acting like a complete psychopath and chased her down in the office and cornered her in the ladies room. <laughs> Peter doesn't like that Alva called out of work. So he goes to her fucking house. <laughs> he goes there with a little soup pouch. Soup. And he's like, hey, I heard that you're sick. I'm here to give you some soup so you'll feel better. <laughs> he's screaming to her from outside her window. I think she should probably call the police. He tells her that he's sorry and that he's there to make it up to her. Convinced that Peter is a changed man, Alva admits that she isn't actually sick. So Peter hires a cab to bring them both back to the office. Door to door service, madame. 
on me. And you guessed it, he freaks out on her in the cab. <laughs> He calls her all sorts of names. He's extremely upset about that missing contract. The goddamn contract is somewhere in those goddamn fucking files! He starts freaking out while he's in the restroom, and there's some dude taking a dump in there. It's a pretty funny scene. Oh god, where am I? Nick's overacting lends itself pretty effectively in this instance. Later that night, Alva's still at work, and she finally finds the contract. By this time, Peter is too far gone. He starts screaming at her that it's too late anyway. Too late! Too late! Too late! It's too late, Alva! It's all too late, Alva! And then he chases her down again. Cornered, Alva pulls out her gun. Peter begs her to shoot him. He even threatens to fire her if she doesn't. <laughs> she says, don't rape me. And Peter goes, oh, I will. I will. Come on, Alva. Shoot. Not the floor, Alva. Me! He's gone completely bonkers. And clearly Alva doesn't actually want to kill him. Peter then grabs her and rips her dress off and sexually assaults her. She passes out, and then we get a glimpse of Peter's perspective. He still sees the vampire woman, Rachel. She haunts him endlessly. He picks up the gun, puts it in his mouth, and fires. Twice but they're blanks. This scene is kind of funny to me because if he actually did this, this action would cause severe injury or death. Since a gun loaded with blanks will fire compressed gas with the force of a bullet, he then makes this ridiculous sound. <laughs> What he's actually saying here is boo-hoo. Nicolas Cage made it a challenge for himself to actually have the character say boo-hoo, as if he's like this big baby. I was always trying to challenge myself, like, can you get away with actually saying boo-hoo? Yeah, and <laughs> without it sounding childish. Yeah. Believing that he can survive gunshots directly to the face, he thinks that he evolved into a vampire for real this time. He runs through the streets screaming, I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! I'm a vampire! He destroys mirrors, covers his windows, and pulls a couch over himself like a makeshift coffin. Alva is next seen in her room, obviously traumatized from the night before. Peter bites a pillow, but he can't rip it open, so naturally, he goes to buy vampire teeth. He doesn't have enough cash on him, so he ends up buying just the dollar store plastic versions. And then he starts chasing pigeons. I didn't know vampires ate pigeons, but apparently they do. What the fuck is this movie? <laughs> it's so funny just watching him like run around in a circle chasing a pigeon. He then catches one. Miraculously, he hides it in his coat and he runs home. And those are real pigeons. He literally caught a pigeon. And the only way he was able to catch the pigeon is because they drugged it beforehand. These pigeons are drugged. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, how else do you think you caught it? <laughs> Did you think, hey, I'm a really great actor. I can catch pigeons. I, I don't know what I thought. Yeah, so Peter brings the pigeon home and eats it. He then sleeps through the entire next day. That night, he leaves his apartment. His eyes are super wide again. <laughs> He looks like such a goon walking around. He still has his teeth in, and he forces his way into a club. He looks so demented walking through this club. It's hilarious. <laughs> look, look at his fucking face. He finds a woman sitting by her lonesome and creeps up to her. He bows awkwardly. He flirts with her at first, but then attacks her, chomping into her neck. The girl is lying there, presumably dead. So Peter runs away and hides in a corner of the club somewhere. Rachel returns for the last time to tell him that he's pathetic, that she was never his partner. So then he imagines her leaving him for good. He approaches the real Rachel in the club, the woman he based the vampire version in his mind off of. He screams at the people around her, Look at her teeth, she's a vampire! Look at her teeth! Shut up! Shut up! She's a teeth. goddamn vampire! The surrounding club goers are very confused. He's then kicked out of the club. He finds himself in sunlight and freaks out, you know, because naturally he's a vampire. Right, Nick? Kill me, I'm a vampire. He goes up to random people on the street and he asks them to kill him. He even goes to a church wishing for death. He's walking in the middle of the street, blocking traffic. He's screaming and dragging a stick. <laughs> There's a scene when he yells at a random passerby. I'm a vampire. Kill me. And according to the director, they weren't extras. These two are real um, hobos. Those were two real hobos on the street. Yeah. I shot that on a long lens. They didn't know we were filming. They, they were just random people that Nick was yelling at. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were these people? 
only to later find out that you were in this ridiculous movie. So Alva tells her brother what Peter did to her. Her brother wants to teach Peter a lesson, so they look up his address and drive there. Peter then has his final appointment with his psychiatrist in his mind. In reality, he's just talking to a wall. He makes such a perfect madman in this scene. Look at his face. <laughs> his facial expression alone is perfect. It's incredible. We switch back and forth from his perspective to an outsider's perspective. He shares how he's fallen in love and had his heart broken, and all he needs is love to be truly happy. He imagines his psychiatrist telling him that she has another patient also searching for love. She introduces them, and their interests are obviously the exact same. So they're perfect for each other. He then says, Oh yeah, um, actually I did rape someone the other night. So the psychiatrist in his mind is like, oh, it's okay. He then says, oh, I also murdered someone. <laughs> so she responds by saying, people die every day. What's the big deal? You stop worrying and just get on with your big romance. So Peter is clearly just making excuses for himself. So he brings his imaginary new girlfriend, Sharon, to his apartment and they immediately start having a disagreement. Because there's no way in hell that I would ever, ever marry a loudmouth pig like you. He can't even find the perfect woman in his own mind. That's so sad. So, uh, Nick, it doesn't seem like you have very good luck with imaginary women. You think I really give a shit? She was as incompetent as Alva. Sucks to be you, dude. <laughs> his acting in this scene is so good. He really goes crazy. Get the hell out of here, you fucking pig! <laughs> And everybody knows that Nicolas Cage has the tendency to overact. But in this movie, I think he gets a pass for the most part. Because I just like to imagine that the character is this insane. This Peter character has never known love. And over time, that definitely takes a toll on someone. In Peter's case, it's just taking a drastic turn for the worse. Alva's brother breaks into his apartment, finds him under his sofa. Immediately, Peter tries to kill himself with the piece of wood that he was carrying around. Alva's brother is more than happy to assist him, and he dies. The end. This is a movie about a power-hungry man whose loneliness drove him insane. He's basically just a wealthy Redditor before Reddit existed. He's a wealthy 4chan user before incels were a thing. Nicolas Cage was paid $40,000 to star in this movie, and he used the money to buy a 1967 Stingray Corvette. And this is so much funnier knowing how irresponsible Nicolas Cage is with his money. He just buys a bunch of fancy shit. I just did a quick Google search to find this article about the 15 most surprising purchases he's ever made. He bought the first Superman comic for $150,000. He bought a spooky mansion for almost three and a half million dollars. <laughs> hey, that sounds like somewhere I'd like to live. I am a vampire after all. Apparently this mansion, the La Lori mansion, was used for inspiration for the Kathy Bates character in American Horror Story Coven. It's been considered haunted for a very long time. The mansion was once home to a woman named Delphine LaLaurie. Basically, she sadistically harmed her slaves. And since then, this house has just been considered haunted. And many people have claimed to have seen haunts in this house. And Nicolas Cage was like, hell yeah, that's a house that I want. He bought a bunch of rare pets. He bought a crocodile, a pair of albino king cobras. He also carried around a vial of anti-venom with him in case the snakes ever bit him. He has more than 20 cars. He has nine Rolls Royces. He has an Enzo Ferrari. He bought a private island for $3 million. He bought a Gulfstream jet. He bought his own shark. <laughs> The Nicolas Cage shark. <laughs> He's purchased a castle. Oh, sorry, he bought two castles. The Midford Castle in England and the Schloss Neidstein Castle in Bavaria. He bought a collection of pygmy heads. What? <laughs> he bought the skull of a T-Rex for $276,000. The dude bought a pyramid tombstone. He wants to be buried in a pyramid. Like, bless this man to just have the balls to buy and do whatever he wants. It's not like he's hurting anyone. He's just a weirdo. <laughs> he bought an octopus. He's purchased more than 15 homes. He has four separate yachts. So yeah, he's not a stranger to spending money. I like to end this video by reading some headlines for some negative reviews. This is what Variety had to say about Vampire's Kiss. Cage's over-the-top performance generates little sympathy for the character, so it's tough to be interested in him as his personality disorder worsens. What? Why would you ever have sympathy for this guy? <laughs>
He's a murderer. He's a rapist. There's like nothing likable about this guy. The only thing interesting about him is how wacky he is. Watching his spiral downward is the fun to be had in this movie. You know, you're not supposed to be empathetic towards this guy. You're supposed to dislike him. And when he dies at the end, you're not supposed to be like, oh no, right? You're supposed to be like, oh, well, he had it coming. Karen James of the New York Times wrote, the film is dominated and destroyed by Mr. Cage's chaotic, self-indulgent performance. I agree that the film was dominated by him. I agree that it's chaotic and self-indulgent, but mainly because the character is both of those things. But the film wasn't destroyed by this. In fact, if this role was taken by anybody else, it would probably be overlooked. It'd just be one of those movies that is never talked about again. It would have just faded away into obscurity in the next like three to five years. But instead, Nicolas Cage came in and he gave an incredibly ridiculous performance. And I think that's what makes the movie good. Without Cage, Vampire's Kiss is just not the same movie at all. So yeah, I don't think these reviews do the movie much justice. I had a blast watching it. I don't think it's an amazing movie. I think it's just a really fun meme. If you want a movie to just sit down and laugh at with your friends, this is definitely a great choice. That's it. That's my review of Vampire's Kiss. Thank you so much to Shudder for sponsoring this video. If you like what I'm wearing in this video, you can get it at alienclothing.com. Basically, if you like what I'm wearing in any of my videos, <laughs> I'm wearing something from my clothing brand, Alien Clothing. I've been working on this brand for years now, and I think it's reached a point where I'm extremely happy with it. So thank you guys so much for supporting it. Leave whatever movies you'd like me to review in the comment section down below. And is there anything else that you'd like to say to end the video, Nick? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Okay, that's my cue. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. W, X, Y. <laughs>